year for them. So it's, this is like very different than the team we played last year. Yeah, no, I, I really like watching Utah State's um, thought process and what they're doing, what they're setting up. And, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be a challenge. They're, yeah. There's no joke. And the nice thing that you see when you're studying the game, you know, when the coaching staff really understands their strengths and their weaknesses, and they really disguise their weaknesses really well by just doing certain things on offense, doing certain things on defense. And uh, you tip your hat off to teams like that. You can tell, okay, we're, we're, we're fighting a smart team here, you know, and we just got to make sure that we communicate well and that we don't have any mental breakdowns and, and play smart football. Championship football is not just, you know, you play in cold weather, you run the ball better and, and whatever else. Championship football is – you're a team that all everybody's on the same page. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what makes a great team. It's okay, we got great athletes here, we got great leadership here, and you know, special player here. But when you're on the same page on a constant level and you don't let the game get too big for you, you know, you really keep it even kill for everyone. And the nice thing about San Diego State, they've been here before. So here they are again. You're at home, you know, you're playing a team that really is enjoying a nice turnaround. And, and all that. So they deserve our respect. But San Diego State, you go out on that field, you do what you do best. You play strong, intense defense. You communicate well with one another and then just execute on offense. And that last key that I had is we've got to get solid quarterback play from Lucas Johnson or, or Jordan Brookshire, you know, and whoever it is that coach, you know, gives the nod to, that's going to be our guy. If we get solid quarterback play, um, you know, and I don't expect us not to, then it's going to be uh, some, you know, a, it should be a great performance for our Aztecs. And I'm really expecting a lot from the guys. And uh, you, you know, got, just, you have a, you got quarterback clips. For I us? do. Oh, okay. and it was really impressive to see last week, you know, and we needed a little shot on the arm, you know, Jordan comes in there. We were struggling. It's an early morning game. And sometimes, you know, you wonder why certain players, you know, not having their best day, you know, and like any sport, you know, you play basketball and sometimes every shot you throw up, it's, it's going in for you. You know, the rim looks like a big swimming pool and you're knocking down every J and it's, and it feels great. You're in that zone. And for quarterbacks, sometimes the game is in slow motion for you. It feels good because you're seeing things, you're seeing disguises and you know where to anticipate. And sometimes it's just not that, you know, you're a little off that day. And boy, San Diego State's blessed to having two young quarterbacks or two quarterbacks that, you know, if one's a little off that day, the next guy can come in and, you know, and pick it up. And that's exactly what Jordan did on, on you know, last Friday, which was really awesome to see. And here's a clip of some high level execution by him. You can see it's 16 to 10, 28 seconds left to go before halftime. Now this drive here, we only came up with the field goal and I'm going to show two clips from this drive. But this drive right here was a gut punch to Boise State. Not only does Brookshire come into the game and get a quick touchdown. And by the way, hats off to Jesse Matthews for the sensational yes. catch to get the first drive, the first touchdown drive going. Ooh. That young man is playing at a high level right now. And Brookshire kind of underthrew his first throw. It was a great read by him with the pump and gave him a chance on a double move, a sluggo look. And you know, and Jesse Matthews mosses the DB, you know, <laughs> and gets the drive going. And, you know, you get that little, okay, here we go, gets the chains moving and, you know, puts us at 16 to 10. And then we stop them on that big third and seven that you saw in the earlier clip. And then here we are again with 28 seconds left. We're in our own territory. And if we can get points on this drive, you talk about a gut punch and yeah, it was only a field goal, but that field goal felt like a touchdown only because Boise state was riding very comfortably just a minute and a half ago at 16 to three. And before you know it, it's 16 to 13 going into your locker room and what just happened here. And you have a ignited San Diego state football team that's at home and now is believing and you know, they're feeling great. And so this drive right before, if we look at this, this is a single high look. Now, Boise State, boy, are they high quality. They got a three-man rush, but they're mugging two linebackers here. 
you know, and they're disguising their look. They're showing here, Jordan Brookshire, they're showing him a cover three look, okay? And what they're gonna run, so I got a little schematic here for you, Matt. Give you a little coaching clinic talk here. And I'm using my language here. This is Coach C's language here. We got a Latin twins, right? And all that means is Latin means that we're gonna be in gun and it tells a tailback, you're gonna be on the left side and all that. And here's our twins formation and a Y here, a Z here, an F there and an X there. And we drew up Boise State's front where it's gonna end up, okay? And I'll show you on film how it changes and all that. But a cover two, for those that aren't too sure what a cover two is, this corner is gonna sit in this flat and then you're gonna have the Sam gonna have the hook to curl, the wheel's gonna have the hook to curl, the corner's gonna have this flat on this side and the nickel is gonna have the deep half here. The dime's gonna have the deep half and their free safety acting like a robber, he's gonna beeline it. It's what we call a Tampa two basically is what you got. And they're gonna bring pressure here. But this route right here, this one right here by the Y, I'm circling right here. This is what makes this play that we're about to see on film high level. We don't want him to run out a quick out or even anything out to this cornerback. Why? Because you're gonna run right into him. And if the quarterback throws it to him, this corner is gonna sit on that bad boy. He's gonna pick it off and it's a pick six. Now, that doesn't mean the quarterback can't throw it to him. You have to have a game plan for him, all right? And what we used to call, what I used to call it, is that he's got to have himself, it's going to be a quick out, but he's going to run himself a stop route. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that real quick, is what we're going to do. And what you draw, what you get ready for, is what you draw up, is you tell that receiver, the why in this case, you're still going to run your, route but you're going to come and you're going to sit right there okay he's got to read from pre-snap a cover too high look okay and if he reads that cover too high look and he sees that corner sit he has to sit in this hole all right now you have the quarterback reading a read here in the cover two hole but then you have another hole right here that he just sits you don't want him to continue to run out because he's running into trouble yeah. If you recall the UNLV game, we're about to score deep in the red zone and yep. their DB jumped it, made a sensational interception. <laughs> and so here's our young man in SDSU in Montezuma land, learning that lesson, good lesson. And lessons are always fun to learn after a W and not after a loss. And so you're going to see on this clip exactly what we get. Okay. So we're going to go back. You can take it back to the... Yep. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. So here we are now with the play. Boise State, high-level program here. They're showing a, they're not showing a cover two. They're showing cover three. You got safety or corners playing off. Cover three look. You got a single high. Brookshire seeing this. And the beautiful thing about Boise State, they know we want to get rid of the ball quick. They know we want to get into field goal range. So they're going to go ahead and give the quarterback a cover three look so that we can throw something towards the sideline, catch it, get out of bounds so we can conserve time. You know, we only got 28 seconds. So Boise State says, yeah, we'll let you do that by mugging these linebackers, by giving you a cover three, soft cover three shell look. And Boise State's credit, but we ain't going to give you that when the ball is snapped. We're going to sit these corners here and you're going to see this dime who's looking at covering number two, he's going to beeline it to this deep half. You're going to see this guy beeline it to this deep half, and you're going to see this guy go ahead and run that Tampa two where he's going to cover that deep middle as they bring four, and they use one of these guys to get the hook to curl. So we're going to run the tape, and then I'll pause it because you'll see the guys drop, and boom, there they go. You get this the nickel, he's going to drop to that half. You see this corner squat in here. All right, we're going to get ourselves that Tampa two look where he's going to cover that middle and you got that free safety coming all the way to find that other half. Now, Jordan here sees that he's reading this side here and you're going to see our Y. He's going to sit in that hole. OK, he doesn't want to keep running. He wants to sit in that hole. Now, the genius, the high level Q beam is when you tell our quarterback, you don't want to lead him when you see that. DB sit, you want to go ahead and hit him. And if all possible, if you really are special at what you do, 
You want to put that ball in his inside shoulder so that he can get vertical right away. And so you're seeing some high level execution where he gets mm. it on the inside shoulder and you pick up 16 yards or so on a very important drive, you know, and in college football, that clock stops, you know, because of chains are being moved and whatever. And you used up five seconds, five, six seconds. And it's a great job picking up 16 and then on a two minute offensive type atmosphere or situation, if you will, your first play of that two minute drive is a 16 yard gainer on some high level execution by the quarterback and by the Y, you know, the tight end in this case here, we call him the Y and there's nothing more important when you're running a two minute situation of that very first play, you know, you really want to make sure that you execute well on that particular play, just to get the thing going, get that momentum going here. So that ball placement is really critical, right? Which shoulder, which side the, the quarterback can locate it to the receiver. Absolutely. And what you do, what you see teams like Mike Leach, every program Mike Leach has ever coached at when he was at Kentucky, when he was at Washington state, when he was at Texas tech, and now he's at Mississippi state. Yours. That's all they work on. Correct shoulders. One, two, three here, read coverages, and you're just getting rid of the ball. And when you're doing that at a, such a high level, oh man, six, eight, 10, 12 yard gainers are not an issue. And yet it was like, a, it was a five yard throw. It looks like, but it's yeah. just moving chains and, you know, you know, the coach mummies and the, you know, June Joneses and Mike Leach, that's all they worked on. And it really stems from the Sid Gilman's back in the day, the Don Coriel's, those minds, the Al Davis's, that, the Bill Walsh's, you talk about you're up all night where this ball needs to be at. How many steps is this going to take, you know, from a quarterback cut blocking by the offensive lineman? You're just demand of, and, you know, I remember when I was coaching, I was so demand of how I wanted receivers to run a simple hitch. And I mean, you're working it over and over. You attack this shoulder if you're the outside guy. You attack this shoulder if you're the inside guy. Feet placement was huge with me. I would never allow my outside or inside receiver to have his feet the same way as this guy. They had to be different because the timing of every route was different from the inside guy as it was from the outside. Why? Because it's a shorter throw, you know, and I needed his route to come up open faster than his guy, you know, to the outside guy. So those little details, it's the beautiful part of the game of football that you see. And we just saw it from Brookshire and from the tight end of just seeing coverage, understanding the adjustment, you hit it. And Boise State didn't do nothing wrong. It was a perfect disguise. It was just better execution by our offense. And we picked up 16. So here we are again, the same look. Boise State, this is the very next play after the TV timeout, after we got used our third or our first timeout. And Boise State says, all right, we're going to give you the exact same look. And again, put it in the quarterback's head. Are we going to go ahead and run this cover three shell? Are we going to disguise it again or whatever else? And so it's a great read again by San Diego State. You're going to see same thing. You see this guy's going to run to that half, okay? You're going to see this guy. It's a soft Tampa two. They're going to kind of bail a little bit, but they're really squatting. They're going to, they're in charge of this flat, but they're kind of giving a different look, but this guy's beelining it to the hook to curl and the free safety that was sitting here. He's the one in charge of covering the deep middle. And what's the difference between a Tampa two and a regular cover two is you got someone beelining it over the middle because you always on a cover two, the open middle is wide open unless you have someone covering that. And so they're, they're just preventing a big play. But again, San Diego State has an answer here. They're going to run what I call a short dig, five yards, and he's going to run a dig route. And you're going to have two verticals, two seam routes by our number two receivers to the inside. And their job is just to get to the inside. And if you just allow me here on this new share that I'm going to give you again, new schematic here is what do they just do? Well, it's the same thing. It's this cover two look. And if you see this Sam right here that I got where he's got hooked to curl, you're going to have this dig route. And this route is to occupy him. His job is just to get into the inside and then get his eyes turned around as this dime covers this half, as the free safety is covering the deep middle. The wheels got hooked to curl. 
and so forth. And all Brookshire is seeing is reading is seeing this right here from the dime to the Sam. If their backs are toward him, you just get inside, you hit that third step and you drill it. And that's exactly what you see. Again, high quality execution from Brookshire. We'll run it just a tad so you can see it again. So here we go again and showing again, the schematic. We're gonna go ahead He's going to run that inside seam route. I would call it, I call this Benji. And it was just a four with the eight. And he gets on the other side, gets it a little behind him. But the point is he knows where the hole is at. And you catch it. And look at that. We're at the 20 yard line. And Matt, what's so big about that? We started off the drive with 28 seconds left to go. We were at our own side of the you know, 45 yard line, 42 yard line. We use up 10 seconds and we're at their 20 yard line. Wow. Already in scoring position because the team, the offense executed at such a high level, recognized the disguise, recognized the adjustment, had an answer for their disguise and picked up chunks to get into field goal range, to get into scoring range right away. And to me, outside of Jesse Matthews, great catch, which was to me the play of the game because it got us going, you know, but Brookshire, and the receiver's execution on that drive right before halftime was just a huge gut punch because all the momentum was now guaranteed going for us. And it was just a massive, massive play. And it's just fun film to study because you're just seeing high level football. That's what it's going to take for us to win the Mountain West because we're playing a team that really understands passing concepts, understands how to get rid of the ball, how to adjust to certain coverages um, our defense is well prepared for all that and if we can go ahead and match that and continue to play what we do the way we've been playing I don't see why we can't get our 12th win of the season and carry that trophy at the end of this next game well it will be the Aztecs 22nd football championship if they can pull it off this Saturday 12 noon Pacific time on Big Fox the Aztecs and the Aggies San Diego State Utah State. It kind of reminds me of when we played Wyoming back in 2016 for the championship. You know, we were the, the returning team. They were kind of the upstart team. But I think we're going to pull this one out. Uh, you know, I feel I feel pretty good about this game. Vegas has us at, let me see, maybe six and a half point favorites, five and a half point favorites. So they've been pretty good with us the last few games. Last week, the exception. But uh, I, I, I could see it a little, a little more than the spread. We'll, we'll see. Hopefully we get our running game going like what we've been used to in Aztecs Nation. But uh, this is some really, really positive notes to see uh, Brookshire, his accuracy. And, man, has this passing game improved so much throughout the, throughout the season, really. Absolutely. And you mentioned the running game, how important that is. And running games obviously do a couple of things for you. It gets you that time of possession. It keeps the other offense that, you know, really likes to be a high scoring offense if we can keep them on the sideline. But if, if San Diego State can go ahead and get an, a nice lead or at least a lead and keep that lead by really physically handling the fronts, and that's going to be the key. We got to be able to handle the you know, the trenches on both sides of the ball. And we'll be able to tell right away if we can get to their quarterback right away and give their front line, their offensive line problems by getting to the quarterback. Hey, when you do that, all of a sudden you're getting turnovers, you have short fields or whatever else. But this Aztec offense has got to make sure that they're balanced. They do really well. We got the right type of running backs. Um, they can go ahead and get it done that don't mind getting carrying the load for the offense and carrying the team. It's just nice to see our quarterbacks really, you know, being able and having a chance to shine, you know, and seeing our receivers shine as well. And um, I'm looking forward to it. Let's not take them lightly. Take this game like it is BYU. Take this game like it is Fresno State or Boise State. You know, these guys really believe here in Utah State that, you know, they're they're destined you know, and we got to make sure that we flex a little bit and just handle our business and keep our feet solid to the ground and just do what we do best and stay unified, play strong and uh, take care of home turf and then let everything else just fall into place. Just play good sound football. And I think we'll be okay. 
Well, you heard it here from Coach C, Coach Carrasco. Thanks again for your time. Hopefully, we'll be talking about a big uh, bowl game matchup in the near future. That's a guarantee. And for all you watchers, we appreciate your subscriptions to our YouTube channel here, the Sons of Montezuma. Also, don't forget to check out our weekly podcast where we preview this Utah State game. We recently had the Aztecs legendary receiver, J.R. Tolver. So that was a really cool podcast this past week. And of course, SonsOfMontezuma.com for all of our merchandise and our preview articles. Coach C, let's do it again next week. Can't wait. Go Aztecs. Just want to say a quick thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the Sons of Montezuma film room here, where we do a lot of highlights, our uh, post game and some of our scouting reports. And if you haven't checked out sonsofmontezuma.com, definitely check that out where we have our news articles, our post game recaps, our previews. It even houses all of our podcast episodes, our weekly podcast with K5 James and Dirtball Dan and myself. And of course, our SonsOfMontezuma.com shop. Earlier this year, we signed our first name, image, and likeness deal, making the official Greg Bell t-shirt. Well, we're happy to announce that we've signed our second player to the Sons of Montezuma team, Matt Ariza, our star punter. You can purchase his jersey t-shirt available now, just in time for the holidays at sonsofmontezuma.com forward slash shop. Definitely want to support all of our Aztecs players and the hard work they put in this season. So definitely go get that. Only a couple more games left in the season. So let's support our Aztecs and continue to check back here every week as we give you more coverage of the Aztecs football team from a fan's perspective. sonsofmontezuma.com. Go Aztecs.